suit up, strap in, warm the tires, and leave on yellow. Time for the Mitsu Times podcast. Presented by MitsuTimes.org, the home of the fastest Mitsubishi cars. With your host, Josh. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Josh from Mitsu Times. Today my guest is Lou Marta. He is the owner and driver. He has a Rally Art and the Evo 10 on our, our list. How are you doing today, Lou? I'm good. How are you? I'm great, man. Uh, you know, after talking to you for a little bit before, uh, you know, in the last couple of weeks and, uh, you know, you've been in the game for a long time, as about as long as I have. And, you know, you've anywhere between DSMs and Evos and RVRs and everything in between. That's that's exactly my kind of person. And uh, I love that we get to uh, do this podcast together. Uh, absolutely. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. I want to say, uh, first off, congrats on the uh, – fan favorite nomination i know uh you know it, it seems like you got a, a lot of support up there in canada and and those guys are definitely they got your back and, and they want to want to see you win it thank you yeah, it means a lot so lou let's talk about what it is that got you into mitsubishi's in the first place well oddly enough i was not born in canada or north america so my family came in as immigrants from romania in 99 and we had this, I still remember to this day, we had this community center that we used to attend. And as a kid, I was about eight years old at the time. Uh, I remember walking with my parents and there there must have been an employee car, but it was a red 1GB Talon that was parked there. So again, this was in 99, so the car was still relevant. It was still right. relatively new. It could have been five, six years old. Um, and every time we'd walk, I'd always stare at it and I'd always look at it. Um, and that kind of had, it, it, it became imprinted in my brain, so to speak. Um, and then, you know, movies like Fast and Furious came out as a kid and watched it and, uh, you know, got into high school, had friends that started getting cars and Eagle Towns, Plymouth lasers were the common, you know, tuner car in the mid two thousands or whatever for high school kids to get. Cause they're yeah. relatively cheap. You could pick up, uh, a non turbo for a thousand bucks, 1500 bucks, you know, TSR wheel drive for maybe 2,500 bucks at the time for a decent one. So kind of just growing around them, seeing them, seeing what they could do, kind of sparked that memory of of um of that car that i saw as a kid so i kind of fell in love with them since then and then when it came time for me to get my license in a vehicle um i steered towards that so i think that's how i got into it after seeing what the potential of the engine was seeing what the cars could do um again big on the forums big on youtube back then um yeah i think that was pretty much just it it was a slippery slope after that i got into it and couldn't get out yeah (laughs) i tried but i couldn't (laughs) yeah it's like we, we try to get away and it brings us back in. Yeah, I've done that probably about three times now where I've yep. said, okay, that's enough. I'm going to move on. And, you know, within the year, I'm back into it. So yep, same. I've kept with that. It's just what it is for, you know, the last 15 years, 16 years or 17 years, whatever it's been now. And I sell, that's just it. I sell all my parts and then it seems like a couple months later, I'm building them back up. Yeah, you, you end up with another one on your lap, right? So <laughs> that's how it goes, yep. So you, you've had a, a wide variety of Mitsubishis. I, I said earlier uh, everything from Evo 10 to RVR. Uh, you want to talk us through some of the, the Mitsubishis you've owned over the years? Yep. So I started off, uh, the first car I bought was a 94 Talent ES. So for those that are familiar with that, that's a 4G63 non-turbo front wheel drive, uh, five-speed car. And it stayed that way for maybe a few months. I ended up um, picking and choosing all the stock TSI parts or 14B exhaust manifold ECU, all the stuff to boost it. And I ended up boosting my NA. Uh, the car ended up running a 14.1 at 100, and this was probably in 2008, 2009. Dang. I was, you know, in high school, basically. Yeah. Uh, and that was my, fir- uh, that was my first and only uh, front-wheel drive. I've, I've then had five all-wheel drive 1Gs. I've never had a 2G, though. I do love them, but I haven't had any. Um, so, yeah, six 1Gs. I've had two Evo 10s. Um, I've had my Evo 10, the one I have now, for roughly seven years. And at a brief point there, I ended up buying one with a blown engine for really, really cheap, and I had engines kicking around, so I put an engine in it, used it as a winter beater, and then sold it uh, the following summer, basically. So at one point, I had two Evo 10s. I'm back to just one now. <laughs> and uh, for rally arts, I probably own six or seven as well. I have two right now. Uh, I use them as parts cars for the most part. I get them relatively cheap, and there's a lot of good parts that would work on the Evos, some parts that work on the base Lancers and in between, so it ends up being a good little, good little way to get some parts for a good price. And besides that, yeah, I have my RVR. Uh, I just bought that as a daily. I used to have a Ford Escape as a daily driver, but it was killing me on gas. It was one of those three-liter V6 ones. Oh, man. 
I knew it was time to retire. It was, it was high mileage. I just said, hey, I got to get something else. And what better than an RVR? Because it's built on the same platform as the Lancer. So parts For are sure. plentiful. And it's cheap to operate. And it's been a fantastic vehicle. So I love it. And uh, my family likes it. It's got everything I need. And it's great on gas. And I can't complain. Definitely. So, uh, Luke, kind of talking back about, uh, you know, your Evo 10s at one point in time, you had two. What, it, what was it about the uh, Evo 10 that kind of got you into that platform? Um, well, to be fair, I wanted an 8 or 9 uh, back in the day, essentially, when I got the Evo 10. The problem is, being up in Canada, <clears throat> the exchange rate and, and whatnot, it just didn't seem to work out. So, uh, at the time, I had about $25,000 to spend, give or take. Um, but all that I could afford is basically a fourteen, fifteen thousand dollar US Evo eight because then I have to do the, you know, the currency exchange, oh, all wow. the crap to bring it into Canada, the fees, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I to myself can justify spending twenty five thousand dollars, twenty five thousand dollars for a car that's only worth fourteen or fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. So I said, hey, I got to look at something else. So I started looking at the tens, and the more I looked into them, the more they grew on me. Because, um, I guess back then you could say I was one of those typical 4g63 guys were like oh no the evo 10 sucks it's heavy it's it has the wrong engine in it you know i was that guy and i'll admit i was that guy until i got to see them and explore and and drive a couple and i said hey this isn't as bad as i thought it was um and then they just grew on me from there so i just took my twenty five thousand dollars and just bought something locally i ended up spending a fair bit less on my current evo 10 which ended up working out in my favorite side money left over for parts um and yeah from there it just grew on me i ended up really enjoying the platform and like the way the car drove. Uh, when I bought the car, I used to commute about an hour one way. So believe it or not, I was commuting with the Evo. Thankfully, my company paid for gas, so that was great. Because <laughs> <laughs> it would have made me broke if I was having to make that drive every single day. Um, but no, it's been great. And I, I love it. It's comfortable. It's, it does everything I needed to do for for the age. It's still relevant, I think, to this day. It still looks good to this day. It's, it's aged pretty well. So it just, honestly, it, I went from hating the car to it completely growing on me and having to own multiple, basically. So yeah, overall, like I think I, overall, I think I think great. So I feel the exact same way. I, I, you know, typical 4G63 guy rejected them at first. And, and exactly as the years go on, I just love them more and more. Yeah, and I never found that the Evil 10 photographs too well, especially the black. So every time I saw them in pictures and brochures, I'm like, I don't like the way it looks. Until I remember one day I saw one in person parked somewhere. And I saw it with my own eyes, and I was able to walk around and look. I'm like, wow, this thing's actually beautiful. They did a great job with it. But for some reason, the photos don't do it any justice. So, yeah, I think that's where that's where it got me when I saw it in person as well. I said, hey, this is a nice-looking car. They did good with it. So, so let's talk about your current Evo 10 because uh, even though you're number 37 on the list, you are the number one stock block Evo 10. So, so yep. what, what's the setup on your Evo 10 that's making it work so well? Honestly, I think a lot of it is luck, <laughs> but the current setup is it's got an extremely high mileage 4B11 uh, bottom end. It's got 300-ish thousand kilometers, which in, I don't know what that would be in uh, in miles, probably about 180, 190,000 miles, if I had to guess. Okay. Uh, so it's a very, very tired old block. Um, but for setup, it's uh, it's got a 6266 uh, Gen 1, so I think that, that makes it the journal bearing. I have an ETS T4. Uh, hot parts kit that I bought, what was it, two, three years ago, just before COVID. Other than that, it's a pump gas car. We don't have E85 here. I don't spray math, so it's on straight pump 94. Um, it's got Kelford cams, you know, a bunch of odds and ends, obviously, to make it work, supporting mods, fuel, injectors, etc. I did do bigger injectors, so I have 1600s in it. I was hoping to do E85 at one point, um, but obviously it's really hard to get up here, so I haven't yet. Other than that, it's got a full interior in it. We like to take it anywhere on cruises. Uh, I take my family to the cottage with this, so we'll drive it six, seven hours up north if we have to. Um, overall, wow. overall, an all-around car, basically, so it's not just a drag car. I do enjoy it on the street. Do take it places, you know, drop the kid off to school with it. Try to do as much as I can with the car, as long as there's no salt on the ground. So, you know, the summer months, spring, fall, etc. That car's definitely been there, done that, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's been around for a while, so it's, like I said, I've had it for seven years, it's been through a few different changes, had a few different setups on it, and uh, yeah, it just kind of became what it is now by, by accident, more or less. Huh. So did you, like, how, how did you, uh, you know, I, I've heard so many horror stories about the stock block Evo 10, how is it that you've got to this 11.1 at, uh, let's see, what is oh, it? 11.4. 11.4. 11 11 11.4 yeah. at 127, and, and yeah. you, you've been able to keep the car in one piece and to be able to use it every day. 
I think a lot of it is uh, the way I drive it and the tuner. I guess I have to thank my tuner. Uh, Chet Rickerman tuned it. He tuned it. Uh, a lot of people ask me how much power does it make, and I honestly don't know. Uh, it hasn't been as dyno street tuned, and he's done a great job with the car. Um, a lot of people always say, oh, you know, what if this, what if that, but I think he's done a great job being a pump gas car. Um, I don't know, honestly, just maintenance. Uh, I, well, I want to say maintenance. I do maintain it really well, all the fluids I do once a year. I look over everything religiously. The engine I've been neglecting, it's one of those things that um, just due to the mileage, believe it or not, I reuse the head gasket that's on it. So it's got a reused head gasket, and it's got just neglect because I, when I put this engine in and I took it apart and I saw the condition of the engine and knowing the miles. And at that point, when I put the engine in and I said, I just want this car to be able to move under its own power to get off my voice and, and move around. Right. So did it cheaply, reuse the head gasket, put it all together, fired it up, didn't burn anything, didn't do anything, drove it around the block and kind of the radius got farther and farther. You know, drove it out of town, felt comfortable, did whatever. When I cruised, it started getting to boost, started beating on it. Uh, and this was on the old setup. Actually, I had an FP black on the car before this, so just a stock frame turbo. Um, and yeah, I know just beat on it and it took it all and it said, didn't have any issues. It wasn't burning anything. It didn't do anything stupid. Um, so I think I ended up running 11.6 on the FP black at 119 or something like that, or 120. And then eventually I just said, hey, I was going to throw more at it until it just until it just doesn't want to take it anymore. So I did the 6.266, retuned it, you know, bigger fuel, et cetera, et cetera, retuned it. Um, and then I ran that 11.4 at 126, 127. It's done a bunch of consistent 11.4s. Uh, lately I've been having issues with the clutch. Um, but otherwise, no, it's just complete neglect on the engine part. The rest of the car, I guess I take really good care, but the engine gets one oil change a year, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have a secret formula to how to keep it together because I'm not sure myself how it stays together. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, it's, I think it's just one of those freak blocks, uh, you know, high mileage. It's been weathered almost, so to speak. I think it's almost like the LS guys that do really good with those junk aired work van engines that have, like, God knows how many miles. You know what I mean? I think yeah. it's one of those where they're just really weathered and really – set you know they're a little bit on the looser side and they're just happy to take power so <laughs> i think that's just it honestly that's amazing but yeah no i'm, I'm impressed by it every single time I'm, i i i'm actually going to be sad if or when this engine goes i'm going to be truthfully sad i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah i seen where you were talking about uh starting to have some clutch issues so um yeah yeah so the clutch that's in it now oddly enough is a mixed match of parts I'm not going to get into why it's mixed match because that's political, but it's a mixed match of parts, and it did well. I have, what, probably about 30,000 miles on the clutch, um, which is pretty good for a six-buck clutch that gets driven and dragged and et cetera. So Definitely. It's finally kicked the bucket. I just ordered an ACT, um, the ACT Mod Twin, so the new twin that they came with. Yeah. So that just came in, so I'm going to be doing that over the winter and yeah, get to see if we can do some better 60-foots uh, next year. Heck, yeah. So when you first bought this car, did you have any, any goals with it? Like I want to run this or did, was it just one of those cars where it was like, I'm just going to drive it and, you know, maybe take it to the strip for fun. It was one of those cars that I was going to daily drive and keep stock. And I'm sure a lot of people say the same thing, but my initial plan with this car was to just keep it stock, you know, on exhaust and just drive it. Yeah. And obviously it's, it's gone downhill from there, but yeah, <laughs> my, my goal is to keep it reliable and stock. And I ended up blowing the original engine. Uh, while it was stock, and that was 100% my fault. But in in that respect, I said, hey, if it's going to fail anyways, I might as well have fun with it. So that's when the FP Black setup came into play. But like you said, it's a, it's a slippery slope. Very slippery slope, yes. Yeah, one, once it bites, it, it keeps going, right? So, so uh, what is it, you know, it's got to be kind of scary uh, to keep pushing this car and, and to, uh, you know, even though... It is, like you said, a car that you drive around everywhere. You still take it to the drag strip. So what is it that motivates you to, to kind of push this car and, and to see what it does at the drag strip and to be able to cut those 1.7 uh, 60 foots that, you know, are, are faster than cars, you know, a second ahead of you on the list? Yeah, so that's one of my goals, actually, to have a really low 60 foot. And I think, I think the clutch is going to help. Um, but overall, my motivation, I think, is just my personal goal. I've always been a really big fan of stock block cars. Um, there was a gentleman back in the day, uh, Mike, I believe his name is Mike. He had a red 1G Talon. Um, Mike Rosati, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
So he's he's been a motivator of mine for forever because he got that um, his red one G at the time into the nines on the stock uh, six bolt, and obviously that might not be attainable on a four B twelve or sorry a four B eleven, especially in the he had heavy evil. But I've always had this fascination of just pushing the, the limits of the stock block on the cars, and then you know you got guys like O Star that ends up getting that nine two uh, or whatever it was at the time in a one G, and then I think somebody just broke in the eights yeah. on the stock block in a one G. Yeah, yeah, the blue one. I don't remember the gentleman's name. Um, but I think it was just one of those things. That I just wanted to see what goals I can do, like how far I can push a stock block, because everybody and their mother around here seems to go and build all these engines, and they build and sleeve and all this and that, and the cars are still not performing. So I said, hey, I'm going to do my best to work with the little that I got and basically maximize the efficiency. So what can I do to the car to make it more efficient with the little power that's got and go quicker? So what can I take out of it? How can I better myself as a driver? What can I do? with this little power that I have to try to keep up, right? So my personal goal for this car is to try to run a 10 on the stock block. Now, if it's going to do that on pump gas, probably not. Um, am I going to try for it? Absolutely. But, yeah, my ultimate goal is to run a 10.9 in it. Even if I run an 11.1, 11.2, I think I'll be happy. That's more than enough for a street car that runs Definitely, yeah. on pump gas on a stock block, right? So that's my ultimate goal. If I can shave another 10th or two off my time, I'll be happy, but... Ultimately, uh, tens is my personal goal. So once I get to that, I think I'll be done with this car for the time being and just leave it as is or look for something else afterwards. So you've been around the Evo 10 platform. You've been around the 4B11s for sure uh, for yep. a, a good time now. If someone out there, they're building, uh, let's not even say Evo 10. Let's just say someone's building a, a 4B11 platform car. What advice would you give them for their build so they don't make the same mistakes or run into some problems that you've run into in the past? So I would like to say um, just make sure that whoever is working on the car, be it yourself, um, you know, tuner, shop, etc., make sure you're 100% comfortable with them and they know what they're doing. I've seen a lot of hacks around the area, especially locally. Um, people taking up the wrong shops and having issues with this, issues with that, misdiagnosed. Even from Mitsubishi themselves, like even a stock car, I've seen Mitsubishi misdiagnosed these cars uh, i don't know where their text where they're getting their text from but they're definitely not enthusiasts like you and i are you know what i mean we're definitely not living for these cars they're just there for a paycheck right so right. i've seen a lot of this so i think my main uh piece of advice for anybody would be just be 100 percent confident the person you're taking a car to knows what they're doing um, and make sure you get the right parts it doesn't necessarily need to be you know the most extensive part either there's a lot of good parts of these platforms out there. a lot of good companies making parts make sure you get something that's decent that's got some sort of reputation to make sure that whoever's installing it, whoever's taking care of the car, you know, they know what they're doing. And then overall, I find these cars to be really, really reliable, even at higher power. If they're done right, they seem to be really reliable. You can have a lot of fun with them, as long as you know what you're doing, basically, right? So, you know, again, just like the DSM days, maintenance is key. Make sure you do your maintenance on time. Make sure when you get the car, you get somebody to look over it, all the fluids. Make sure the timing chain's good, because that's a big one on these, especially the older ones. You know, basically just do your homework and, and research and ask people that know and ask somebody that you trust to help you with them. I think you'll be fine if you're going to be building Evo 10 or Rally or anything else before B11 in it. So that's my that's my two cents anyways. I like it. I mean, definitely a good plan. I, you know, like we were talking about kind of before we started, it, it goes down to, uh, you know, there's a lot of ways to uh, skin a cat, as they would say out here in uh, right. Kentucky. but. Um, there's there's a lot of ways to do it, but there's only so many ways that are going to be the right way. Yeah, the right reliable way that you're not going to have issues, you know, so you're not throwing money and parts of the car and then, you know, something went overlooked and then it's crapping out on you and then you're like, oh, this car sucks. Well, no, maybe it's not the car that sucks. Maybe it's, you know, A, B, or C that caused the car to suck. You know right. what I mean? So, yeah, that's my, that's my take on it. Um, I'm sure other people have different opinions on it, but I think overall, you know, just being aware of where you're buying, being aware of who's working on it for you plays a big role definitely so lou i also wanted to talk about your rally art because um i love them but they seem to be one of the most uh i wouldn't say hated but um kind of slept on underrated i guess would be yeah. the right word um, yeah platforms in our our little community so what is it that got you into the rally art and and like you said you have two now so there's got to be something about them that keeps bringing you back they're cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, they, they can be cheap. They can be cheap. They can be cheap. So that's uh, a lot of people, 
a lot of people don't know much about Emus. They, they somehow get their hands on a router, and then to them it's just a Lancer. They don't know much, and then you know, when the transmission fails or something happens or Mitsubishi misdiagnoses it, for some reason they're like, oh, this thing doesn't run anymore. I need it gone. First 2000 bucks takes it. Little do they know there's a lot of money in a route here. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of value in one of those cars. So you get one for $2,000, uh, like my most recent one, 100,000-mile um, car, 2012, bought it for two or three grand. Mitsubishi missed that. Most of that jump timing. What it was is the all the seized on it, so it wouldn't crank, and then they tried cranking, and they broke the starter out of the two. Holy so cow. I'm later in the starter later, so, you know, I had those parts kicking around, threw them in. Cars mint, runs great, uh, got perfect compression across the cylinders, got it cheap, right? <laughs> so, and then you end up with a turbo all wheel drive car for pennies on the dollar, and then right. you do whatever you want with it, you know, whether you want to sell it, whether you want to daily drive it, winter beat it, part it out, you know, somebody needs an engine or somebody needs an SST core or somebody needs, you know, who knows what, a hood, you know, you could sell them. So that's how I ended up getting into the rally arts. Um, the one that's on the list that ran the 12.9 uh, was supposed to be just that, it was supposed to be a parts car. Um, when, when I bought a sight and seen the guy dropped it off, really, really nice guy. Uh, he's the, basically the first owner of the car. Um, and you know, I saw it and I said, Hey, I, I don't have a heart to park this thing out because it's, it's in really good shape. He took great care of it. Full maintenance history. Interior was clean. Exterior was clean. No rust. You know, he's got a ceramic coated every year. It was beautiful. So I said, Hey, instead of just, you know, putting this car through the ringer, why don't I drive it? And drive it? Just daily and see what I can do with it while it's here kind of thing, right? So this episode of the Mitsu Toms podcast is brought to you by AS Custom Keys. They make keys for your Mitsubishi that you can customize to match your valve cover, or you can get one that looks like the OEM valve cover. You can customize them to whatever you want. They have 420A, dual overhead cam 672, the DSM Galant BR4 4G63, and Evo 4G63 valve cover keys. Get yours today by hitting them up on Instagram at AS Custom Keys or Going back to uh, kind of what we're talking about with the Evos, um, yep. not only are you racing this one, but you're also, it's not like you're taking it easy because your 60 foot would be, I want to say, would put you at number 10 or 11 on the list overall. So, um, you're on not, the rally art, right? Yeah, on the rally art. So, it's not like yep. you're just uh, buying a rally art to daily drive. So, what is it about the, the rally art platform that makes you push it too? Because I, I know a lot of people don't like the SST, a lot of people don't like this, don't like that. So, um, I'm, like I said, you're, you're getting it down and, and making this car work for its money. So, um, absolutely. What motivates you to push this car? Just uh, myself again. I, I I honestly didn't think the car would run at twelve. I was going there with very low expectations. I was hoping to get the car into the thirteen. So I don't even know if they run stock, to be honest with you. But you know, if I saw a thirteen on the time slip, I'd be pretty happy um <laughs> yeah the first pass i drove it there you know about an hour or just it's about 45 minutes to my nearest track i drove it there and um it didn't even come out of helmet because i didn't even expect it to be that quick um full interior full sub in the trunk everything full weight wow and yeah it's on winter tires too oddly so it's not even like it's on fantastic tires it's on you know few year old winter tires so i just launched and i i went to the end of the track i'm like okay that felt good and then the gentleman at the end of the track there he's like oh do you have a helmet like that I run quicker than a 13 nine. He's like, yeah, 12 nine. I'm like, well, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> so yeah, next few passes I have to put the lid on because the car is too quick. So it's, it's pretty consistent, but as for motivation, I honestly don't know because the car is bone stock. I didn't do anything to it parts wise. So it's got you know, stock paper filter still stock intake yeah. in the cooler. Just want to it's see what all it stock, does. Everywhere. stock exhaust, stock muffler. Uh, it's got a three port and I tuned it myself. So that's pretty much the extent of, of the mods list is a three port boost controller and a tune. Man. And uh, that's what I got out of it. It's high mileage as well, so that car has 295,000 kilometers, which, again, it's be what, one, uh, same thing, around 180,000 miles, if I had right. to guess. Yeah. It's in the conversion of my head quick, but around there. So it's a high mileage car, but it just drives really good, so it's, it's going to enjoy it as is. So, yeah, if you're putting around out there in your rally art and you're you're too scared to go to the drag strip because you don't think it'll do anything, 1.860 foot on, on a nearly stock rally art. Yeah, I'm gonna try to see if I can get in the one sevens next year. I'm gonna try taking that again, and I'm pretty sure if I play around the spark cut a little more, I probably can uh, get the thing in the one sevens, which would be pretty good. Or I'll just throw the slicks on my Evo one just in case, because I was spinning a bit on the launches, so I might uh, I might just put the slicks on it and cut that one seven with it and see what it does. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you got the short track down, there's no reason that you couldn't easily send that thing into the top tens of our rally art list. 
Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna try to I'm try to get it there. So, do you, is there any goals with either car that you want to talk about? Like, uh, you know, we kind of talked about the sixty foot with the rally art. Is there any goal for the Evo that you know for next year that that's what you want to do? That's it too. So, I actually want to work on my sixty foot for the Evo Ten as well. Because I noticed, I don't know, I must be the Evo Ten platform just seems to have overall poor sixty foot compared to say a DSM. Um, and I don't know if you've noticed that as well. Maybe it's just me, but. You know, a lot of these cars are running in the tens. They're still cutting one sevens or one eight sixty foot. Yeah. Um, whereas I find in the DSM in that area, they're generally running one fives, one sixes, right? Um, on average, again, just rough average. But um, I'm going to try to work on the sixty foot of the car. I know its weight doesn't help, but I've, I'm going to try to do some things for myself as a driver, as a you know, as a mechanic on the car, I should say, um, to try to get the, the car lower. So I think the clutch will help a lot. Uh, more seat time. I'll have to relearn really how to launch on the twin disc. I've never had a twin disc before, so I'm excited for that. Um, but yeah, no, I want to see if I can get a one six sixty foot out of it. That'd be great, I think, and that should help me get into the lower elevens as well. Um, I do really enjoy the car as well for no prep. So I've been doing some no prep events last year and this okay, year, yeah. uh, which obviously you know you're up against a lot of the V8 guys, a lot of the cars that are really well set up. Uh, some boosted, well, a lot of boosted of us is actually. Um, and yeah, I mean it's eighth mile flashlight start. Your your you know your your goal from a standstill in the eighth mile really matters. So I really began to appreciate the eighth mile this year and working on the eighth mile times more so than just the quarter mile times. So but yeah, sixty foot's obviously the most important. So that's what I'm going to try to work on the best I can throughout the years on both platforms. I should say just try to get the thing out of the hole as hard as I can. And uh, yeah, I mean use the little power that I have and the big weight that it's got and just try to be a better driver and get the car out of the hole hard. So that's that's my goal personally. And then, you know, whatever else happens with the times, I'm sure that will follow as I achieve my 60-foot goals. Yeah, for sure. I, I think they say, what is it, a second uh, saved in the 60-foot is two seconds down the track? Yeah, yeah, about a tenth off the 60-foot, about two tenths off the, you know, the top end, basically. Yeah. So, uh, Lou, is there any off-season upgrades that you want to talk about besides the uh, clutch for the Evo 10? Is there anything that you, you're planning on doing for either car? Yeah, so the the, the twin disc for the Evo 10 uh, and some more weight loss. So I'm going to, since I'm doing the clutch, I'm actually going to pull the whole engine out this year just because I know there's a lot of things I gotta I want to redo. There's some wastegate springs I want to play around with. Um, I, have, I have like five PSI wastegate springs in it, so it's having a hard time holding boost up top. So I'm going to play around with that, put some better springs in it. Um, there's a lot of things I want to just general clean up from uh, from the years. There's some weight loss and brackets I could probably lose or trim, et cetera, uh, for a few pounds less off the car. And uh, that's it, mostly just honestly clutch and uh, clutch clean up and weight, basically. So no no power adders. It's not getting a bigger turbo. It's not getting you know fancy suspension. It's not getting anything. Um, for the rally, I'm honestly not sure. Uh, I do want to try to get the car a lot fair bit quicker if I keep it through next year. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do any bolt-ons per se. I want to see how far I can get with basically the stock hardener that Mitsubishi supplies. And um, if I'm tired of that, then yeah, maybe I'll do an inner cooler or a further cooler pipe. The other option was to just do it really dirty is to just leave it stock as is and just feed it nitrous. There you go. <laughs> well, that's another way. I mean, I'm sure I can do pretty good with, uh, if, I, if I throw some weight out of it, you know, put a hundred shot on it and, uh, and the slicks, I'm pretty sure the car will be a lot quicker than it is now. So that's a possibility. I've played with nitrous before in various cars, so I'm 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 open to the idea of doing it on this just because. Um, as for my town, I don't have any plans for that. I think it's got uh, you know 58,000 miles. It's all original, so I'm planning to just keep it. You know, I drove it yesterday for the first time this entire year. <laughs> uh, I drove it once this year, so I'm you know hopefully I can get it out a few more times next year because the, the tires are flat spot at the hell. <laughs> But no, no plans for talent. Uh, like I said, no real plans for rally yard and very little for the evening. So, yeah, I have a very low mileage 2G DSM that uh, I know people say, uh, you know, they don't they hate to see low mileage car people not drive low mileage cars because it's like saving your girlfriend for the next guy. But man, I just right. I, I love to see the uh tachometer uh just say 58,000. Yeah, exactly. Is that what yours is that 258,000? Yep, fifty-eight six right now. Yeah, I'm at fifty-eight. Well, I'm at ninety-three thousand eight hundred kilometers, which is I don't know, fifty-eight and change in miles, almost fifty or fifty-nine, almost fifty-nine thousand miles. Yeah. Um, ish, but no, yeah, I'm the same way. I mean, it's it's one of those cars. I've had my fun with towns throughout the years. I've had them run 11s. I've had them do 
12 on a 14 B. I've had all sorts of, you know, fun within my budget with them as much as I can. And I just really appreciate having a really clean original car that, you know, doesn't get driven in the snow, doesn't get driven in the rain. Right. Just maintain it's taken care of. And it's just there to have, you know, so when I do feel like cruising it, I can and it brings back that, you know, nostalgia basically. It brings back those times. Exactly. It brings back the memory. So now I'm going to keep it the way it is. And if somebody hates the fact that it's clean and stock, then so be it. Yeah. <laughs> Go buy a hack job then, I guess. <laughs> I'll keep my fresh one. I'll hold on to it for when, uh, you know, they, we keep seeing all these prices go up and up and, you know, the DSMs are going for more than they've ever gone for. So yeah, exactly. That's another reason to keep it low miles. And you know what though, the, um, the thing is we're never going to get a car like a one G DSM again. And realistically, we're never going to get cars like any nineties car, be it a Honda, you know, prelude or anything. Eighties, nineties, we're never going to get those cars again where they're, you know, relatively powerful, relatively light, relatively, right you know, simple, there's no nannies, there's no electronics, it was bare bones, but still some performance. We're never going to get those cars again, so you know, we got to keep, take care of what we have. That's that's the history for the for the community, right? That's that's all that's left. Yeah. We're not making them again. We're never going to see them again, right? So let's take care of what's out there and, and appreciate it for what it is and for what it was, I think, and uh, that's just it. Just appreciate it for what it is. So I think we pretty well covered the uh, long-term goals for all of your cars, but is there is there something that we may have missed? Like, uh, you know, is there – we you know, you kind of talked about it in the in the off-season upgrades about you want to do, a, you know, 60-foot here and a 60-foot there and then just have the times come down. Are, is there any certain time, uh, either quarter-mile-wise or eighth-mile-wise, that you're kind of shooting for uh, that, that is like your long-term goal? Like, I'm going to hit this – um, you know, I'm going to keep working until I hit this. Well, we spoke briefly before that about the overall goal for the, for the Evo. And, you know, I said my personal goal is a 10-second pass yeah. uh, on the stock block. But, again, I'm not sure if I'll do it on Pumpcast, but I'm going to try. So I think that's overall the goal is a 10-second pass or maybe even a low 11 on, or a lower 11 on, um, on this Pumpcast. But I think that's it for now. I'm not sure if I'm going to, you know, let's say I do hit that goal next year, the year after, whatever. Um, I don't know if I'm going to pursue further i don't know if i want to go ahead and build right. it and it for nines or whatever i think i'll be content with that because i'm just i'm doing this for myself basically right? right so i think once i get to that point i'll be good um again that could change like you know when i bought the car so i was going to keep a stock and it's far from now so who knows it might change or might not um i've had my heart on a c6 corvette for a long 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 time so oh, okay i have a feeling that when i you know when i hit that spot with the evil i might get rid of it and get into a C6. That said, I'm always going to stick around with Mitsubishi. I'm right. trying to keep my forever. So I'm not going anywhere in that, you know, in that sense. But with the Evo 10 platform, I might be done once against the 10s, unless something changes. Right. So there's a point in time where uh, a car stops being fun. Right. Right. Especially a four cylinder. I mean, you get these guys that make ridiculous power. It all has to them. But I like to drive my car on the street. And it gets to a certain point where, you know, you have to strip the AC out, you have to strip the interior, you have to do everything for them to, to be quick. Yeah. And at that point, it doesn't become a street car. And even though they like to call them street cars, to me, it's not a street car. If I can't put my family in it safely and go for a cruise and get ice cream, you know, without fear of being hit by somebody and killing somebody inside because it's so gutted and all the safety's out of it, airbags right. or everything. At that point, it doesn't become a street car to me. So to me, my family's important. All that stuff's important. And I want to be able to have a car that can do all that stuff with them as well, right? So... Not that a C6 Corvette is the most safe thing ever, but <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's, uh, you know, I've, I've been around the pocket for a while and I would like to get into something else. Yeah. Not yeah. abandoning the Mitsubishi platform, but I would like to venture out into something else at some point in for my sure. life. So, so yeah, I mean, like I said, that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell. But like I said, anything could change. I could potentially, you know, get that 10 second pass and just say, hey, no, I want to I go further with this thing. Let's build it. Let's do whatever. Right. How far we can take it, right? So let's do a nine, who knows? nine five now. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Who knows, right? Anything is possible. I do, I do really like the car. I do really love it. And, you know, I do have um, thoughts of potentially selling it like that. But then I'll get the car out, and you know, I'll go to the track. It'll run consistent eleven fours or whatever. And the next day we'll take it for a drive somewhere. And I sit and think, I'm like, there's really not many cars out there that can do all the things an Evo Ten does. Yeah. Or an Evo in general, right? It's a four seater. You can fill it full of groceries. You can do whatever. You can go on a nice cozy long drive you can do whatever you want with it so and still comfortable yeah, enough to to drive back exactly and work. exactly exactly so there's a lot of things that it can like you know like the car in general does a lot of things overall that a lot of cars can maybe there's other cars that are faster or, or roomier there's not a lot of cars that can do it all like an evil does right so 
I think that's the part that keeps getting me is that, you know, I'll, I'll need a lot of cars to replace the one car, basically. <laughs> yeah, you need more, more than one car to replace everything an evil can do, right? So, yeah. So what what events do you plan to attend next year that maybe we could see uh, one of your cars in action or, or see it in person? Well, I want to try to do more drag days. Um, I want to do more no-prep events. We, we have a relatively big uh, no-prep community that's been growing uh, over the last few years. They do multiple events at night, so they do it on the back half of the track. Uh, the, the local track here, Toronto Motorsports Park, they do a great job at maintaining it and doing everything. And the, um, the runoff is actually really long on the track, so they do the no-prep part on the back half of the track. That's cool. So it's a lot of fun. People get together. Everybody backs the truck up, truck up against the track, and uh, there's big concrete barriers, but you're allowed to be up against it. You know, People have a great time every single time, and it's, it's awesome. So I hope to do more no-prep events next year. Um, I hope to do more cruises, meets, family trips. We did a big uh, cruise the Niagara Falls, actually, um, in the fall here, where a lot of, I think it was about 12 or 13 of us got together with Evos and drove all around, so more of that, so just overall enjoy the car more when the weather's nice, and, you know, just make memories with it. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah. So, where can people uh, go online and kind of see your cars and, and kind of keep up with your builds? So, I only have Instagram, I do not have Facebook, um, and my Instagram is PSI. Or TSI, so PSI, then number four, TSI. Very self explanatory. Um, other than that, I don't have much. Um, just Instagram. I don't have uh, I don't have TikTok. I don't have um, Facebook. I don't have whatever, Twitter, or anything else that people use that day. I don't have any of that. Just Instagram. So that's unfortunately the only way to get a hold of me, I guess. All right, Lou. So finally, is there anybody that you want to give a, a shout out or a thanks to for, uh, you know, helping keep your cars together or, you know, getting you to where you are now? I do actually a lot of people. So I wanted to give a thank you and shout out to you for having this page thank and you. doing this for the community. So I think it's great. I think it's very important that, you know, brings the community together. You get to see what other people are doing and get to help and reach out to other people and communicate. So I think it's fantastic. So thank you. Um, I'm sure it takes up a lot of your time and your free time. So, you know, obviously we appreciate anybody's time when people give you the time. Sometimes it's more important than when people give you money. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, so thank you. Uh, I also wanted to thank uh, my girlfriend, Jamie. She's very supportive throughout everything. She has my back, you know, whatever I need to do. She said, go ahead, do it. And she's, she seems to be very interested in the hobby as well. She likes to learn. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to Isaac uh, from Mitsubishi Turbo Lancer Club, which we spoke about, I think, uh, earlier before yeah. we got there. Um, he's been very good and very supportive and helped me push, you know, help, has helped push me along the way and say, hey, no, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to keep going kind of thing. Um, I also want to give a, a huge uh, public shout out to a bunch of people here. So, um, Isaac, my girlfriend, because they were in on it as well. Andrew, Anthony, Brad, Vaughn, Vince, Gabe, Kirkpreet, Ralph, Ryan, and Rohan. Um, and these people that I just listed actually all pulled in together last year. And uh, they all pulled in and bought me a set of uh, coilovers for the car because I was, nice. I was on some really, some really tired suspension, really questionable suspension with like high mileage, like the stock KYD struts with some lowering springs that I bought the car with. <laughs> Um, so they actually all pitched in together and bought me a set of brand new Fortune Auto 500s, um, just to have less weight. So I ended up saving 40 pounds off the car and just better control of what the car's doing when it launches. Um, so I wanted to give them a big shout out to them. I never got a chance to fully thank them all together properly. So, uh, thank you. I also wanted to thank, uh, my local friends here, Steve, Nick, Rob, and Mike. Uh, they're always the ones that come to the track with me. Uh, you know, trackside support, they help me with their trucks, their trailers, tools, whatever's needed. Uh, just moral support and jokes. <laughs> and uh, and obviously everybody else that I haven't mentioned, a lot of people online that, you know, push me and encourage me and ask me how things are going, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I wanted to give a big shout out to them as well because, you know, it's just little things that people do that help along the way, you know. Yeah, for sure. The little things go go the furthest distances sometimes. Yeah, even just somebody has, you know, sending a message, hey, go on the track Friday kind of thing. You know, I'd like to see you. It's, it's great. So it means a lot to me um, to have people, you know, rooting for me and, and, and hoping I do good. So it's it's fantastic. So I thank everybody, and I appreciate everybody for that. Thank you. All right, Lou, it has been an absolute pleasure. I'm glad that we got a chance to sit down and do this, and uh, I will definitely be looking forward to some updates from you soon with that 1.760 foot. I hope I can do a bit better than that, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right well yeah, i guess we'll we'll be looking for a, a, a update in general on that 60 foot then awesome I, i'm excited for it and i'm looking forward to it and as soon as i get it i'm going to uh to submit it as soon as i as soon as i know you'll know sounds good i'll i'll talk awesome. to you, Thank to, you so much. talk to you in the near future here 
Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, again, thank you for doing everything for the community. And uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. I appreciate it. Take care. Have a great day. You too. Thank you for listening to the Mitsu Times podcast. Check out our Instagram and Facebook for daily updates. Get added to our list by going to mitsutimes.org and clicking submit a slip. Thank you to all of our sponsors.